Welcome, Business 630 students, Corporate Finance for this spring session beginning on Monday, April 3rd. My name is Professor Hasse, and I'll be your instructor this next these next eight weeks. And this is an introduction video to our course, Business 630. Business 630 is a uh, core course in the um, MBA Experience Professional Program. It's a requirement for that all students to graduate from this program to take. It's it's a requirement of the of the program because it concentrates on the financial side of corporations, and that's what we'll be doing uh, this spring session. Uh, the key thing about this MBA uh, experience professional program that you all are in is that it integrates management theory with real world applications, and that's a key for your all for all of you in your studies. As you, if you note in the student discussion form in a post that you need to do this first week of our course, I'm asking you to select a corporation from the Fortune 500. This corporation you will track and do some work on in various case studies throughout our eight week course. For example, you will be doing some work on their financial statements, on their credit rating, on their management strategy. Uh, this is all part of applying study or theory with real world applications. And that's what makes this program, I believe, uh, uh, very valuable in your MBA program. So this video is just a brief video to introduce you to our course. I know looking at my Blackboard, some of you have yet to sign on. So please do so this weekend. Uh, the course goes from Monday through Sunday. So we start Monday, April 3rd, and our first week ends on April 9th. That is when your discussion post is to be posted by. Uh, all our assignments or all our case studies and our papers will be due on every Sunday, and we'll talk more about that later. And additionally, every Monday I will post a, uh, uh, a week lecture video explaining the topics of the week in a lecture format. Remember, this is an online asynchronous course, meaning there's no class time. You do not meet me at, during a class period time during the week online or remotely. Uh, this is strictly online. So you do, your requirements of seeing me are rather limited, but you have many options to see me and I'll talk about that in a few minutes. So it is strictly an online course. So every Monday I will post a lecture video going over the topics of the week. Then I will post a follow-up video every Friday, reviewing the topics, maybe answering any questions that you might've sent me during the week and just conclude the week's studies. Now, if that week happens to include an assignment, I will maybe go over that assignment a little bit more and review it with you in that Friday video. So two videos minimum every week throughout this course. And so that's something to remember, just so you can build your timeline on your study habits for this course. As you can see in front of you is our Blackboard site, and it's already set up and ready to go with each week's material. Now I'll be adding to this week, uh, each week over the course of our class, adding videos and other things. So uh, that's the, it's there for you to begin. If you notice, uh, the sections are pretty obvious, the course syllabus and calendar information. Here's our syllabus, both a PDF and a Word doc file. I've already sent that to you in my introductory email, but you can download that. Here on this page is our important dates of our spring session when your assignments are due. Notice every Sunday, their weight of those assignments, the percent of your course grade, and the concluding part of our class, uh, course evaluations, and your final course grade on June 1st. There's some information about myself. We have office hours via Zoom. Not, they're just voluntary every Tuesday and Thursday evenings from 6 to 8 p.m. If you have any questions, want to go over anything, have any, uh, have any troubles, uh, you can come on Zoom those two nights at that time period, and I'll be there to answer any questions for you. But also, if you can't make it those nights, maybe you have a class, maybe you're working, maybe you're trying to just live a normal life, uh, you can just send me an email or, or post to the discussion forum anything about if you'd like to set a time uh, or a specific time on the weekends that you'd like to Zoom with me or just have a conversation. So I'm available all week. Uh, available to you if you have any questions, but I'm specifically around every Tuesday and Thursday from six to eight o'clock. 
Then we get into the course announcement section. Whenever I send you an email, there's the, it's also copied to this course announcement set area. This is the email I sent you last week, uh, last Tuesday, introducing you to our course. Then we have a Zoom and YouTube links file folder, which I'll post all the videos of, my cla of our classes. They'll be posted here and also <laughs> in the specific week that they will occur in. Here again, here's the link to our Zoom links, and here's a video that will, should help many of you, and I'll talk more about this as the class proceeds, but this is a video about library resources at our, at our Wilson Library that we will use throughout our class, and the main uh, library resource is the DNB Hoover's database, and this is an explanation of how to use it and how to get at it which could be of some help to you as we move into our research side of some of our case studies in this class. Then we have the student discussion forum where uh, I've posted our first week's activity. I'd like you to post to this this week by next Sunday, a brief biography about yourself. Tell us a little bit about yourself and then your company selection and some questions in regards to that company that I would like you to post. This is for a grade, 5% of your course grade. It's due next Sunday, April 9th. I will respond to it as you post to the discussion forum. So if you have any questions, uh, let me know about that. But this is your first assignment right off the bat this week. And then we get into the each week material. And uh, it still needs to be updated. This video is being recorded this Friday, uh, March, 20, March 30th. And so I need to still clean up some things and I will uh, over the weekend and get ready for uh, next Monday when we begin our class. But mainly you can see just a general idea of what I'll be covering every week throughout our course. So just get a general idea of where we are. And then we have a library guide site, which gives you uh, access to the databases that I was just talking about, the DNB Hoovers, here it is right here. Click on that. Our librarian that's responsible to help us, uh, Linda Gordon, there's her contact information. So that can be a very valuable site. And then also, oops, I just clicked out of our class here. Let's go back to it. And then some tools, well, just the various things that might be able to help you about some course, Blackboard help and that sort of thing. So again, it's pretty simple to follow. Uh, I'd like you to get familiar with it this weekend, just so you have a good idea is uh, of what's going on. And uh, so we can start fresh and everybody's up to speed this coming Monday. Another important document that you should review this weekend prior to our class start, start on Monday, April 3rd is, is our syllabus, making sure you understand the requirements and the calendar of our course. Uh, if you have any questions, you can let me know. I'm going to be meeting all of you in our class, and we have right now 18 members in our class, which is a good class for an online class. Uh, I'll be meeting all of you the second week of our course. That's the week of April 10th. I'll be putting together a calendar of, and schedule of times that you can sign on. It's a requirement of this course that in the second week, for me anyways, is to meet with each one of you for 10, 15 minutes individually via Zoom just to make sure I can see you face to face. And uh, also, if you have any questions or concerns about the course heading into the second week, and just uh, just make sure you feel comfortable with the material and the, and the course setup. So uh, that will take place in the second week uh, of our course. And I'll post that schedule uh, in the next week or so. So you can pick a time and a date of the week of April 10th to have a quick Zoom meeting with Professor Hasse. How exciting is that? All right, the, um, the syllabus is just designed to give you information. Uh, here's our, again, our link for our office student hours on Tuesday and Thursdays. We naturally, we use Blackboard. Here's our, we have a YouTube channel. Uh, if you click on this link, it immediately goes to YouTube where I have a channel for our class already set up. Matter of fact, we're gonna watch this video. What is corporate finance in just a minute? Uh, I'll set up for you to where we will post the videos of our lectures and any other subsequent videos are all in this YouTube playlist that you have access to through YouTube. And that's the link that you can do it. It's the Business 630 Corporate Finance Online Spring 2, 2023. Great source of data and information to help you with corporate finance. 
Oops. Okay. And let's get back to the syllabus. So that's the YouTube link. And I'd strongly urge you to take advantage of that. Instead of, uh, no, no, our textbook in this class is optional. You do not need to purchase the textbook. I will provide all the PowerPoints and information that you need from the textbook. There's no problems from the textbook that you need to do. It's just mainly a reference book for our class. And I provide all those reference materials in Blackboard. So why go out and pay $200 for a textbook? when you don't really don't need one. Now, some students still go ahead and buy the textbook or rent the textbook for the class because they just feel comfortable having that material. But as that is optional, it's up to you to have a textbook. Here's a description of our course, which you should read. Our objectives of the course, these eight objectives, which we'll be achieving through our course. The, uh, the assessment of our course, we have a case paper to do in our course, which is a major assessment item of our course. Here's the textbook. It's Financial Management and Theory, 16th edition, but again, it is not a requirement to have this textbook. Here's our grading. You'll have three case studies during the course of the eight weeks. Case studies are a, a case that I post to you. One, one of the case studies will be about the company that you're selecting uh, in this week one discussion forum and doing some analysis of that company. You'll be doing a case paper that I just mentioned, and you'll have a variety of discussion posts and other one-on-one uh, -on -one posts. The five percentage points this week include in that 15%, the discussion forum that you're posting. Your professor meeting with me in week two is another 5% of that grade, of that 15%, and then we'll have another discussion post later on in the class that makes up our full 15% of discussion posts. So there's our, it's pretty simple three case studies and a case paper. Those are your four major works or assessments throughout our class. And here's a, just a brief description of all those. Naturally, but since this is entirely an online course, academic honesty is key. I'll explain that a little bit to you. Your responsibilities, my responsibilities, the usual propaganda from the University of Laverne about our vision, our mission, core values, blah, blah, blah. Some additional university resources to, for you as an online student, You're, you have access to all the resources that, even, uh, that every student has at our university, counseling, student health, campus safety, academic services, Center for Diversity and Learning, wellness, and the food pantry. You have access to all those services or resources. If you need any specific help with that, please feel free to let me know or talk to your academic advisor about all that. Naturally, this is a remote class, an online class, so privacy is very, I follow it very strictly. Everything on our YouTube playlist is restricted, encrypted, just for the students of this class, nobody else. So always, don't have to worry about uh, your information being fly, uh, being thrown out into the internet. Everything is kept within our own little uh, building of this course on Blackboard and YouTube. Again, there's our schedule that we just saw in our Blackboard course information. And here's a little bit more specific information about each week, our activity, our online work, what we'll be covering from the chapter. The, again, our Blackboard week by week is already set up with all this information, but this just gives you a general overview of naturally our first case study is due April 23rd. Our case number two study is due May 7th. Case number uh, three is due May 21st. Your case ass assessment paper is due May 28th. So again, there's all our data that I think could be a good idea. You just review it, make sure you understand the course. And again, in our second week, when we have our professor meetings, uh, that'd be a good time. If any of this is a little bit fuzzy for you, you don't really understand it, uh, you can, we can talk about that in our professor meeting with each of you individually the second week. Again, there's my cell number, there's my email address. You can contact me anytime if you have any questions or problems. Don't get behind. This, as you all know, a lot of you have been in this new eight week format we have at Laverne. You can't fall behind. This course, Business 630, is an advanced 
core course of the MBA program. And we go through it very quickly. You have to stay on top of it. Find a time management system for you during the, the first week of this course. Remember, we have a lecture video every Monday. We have a follow-up video every Friday. So please uh, understand that. If you get behind, please let me know so we can we can help you get caught up. Now here's a 10 minute video just explaining corporate finance. Many of you probably it's been a while since you've studied finance uh, or have it's been a while since you studied detailed corporate finance. So this is a little refresher about our course and, uh, and get you ready to go come next week. Welcome back to the Corporate Finance Academy. And today we're gonna to go through what is corporate finance? We will define corporate finance and go through some of the things that finance at a company actually does. Uh, we'll go through what some of the other finance careers are at a high level. We'll talk through benefits of a career in corporate finance. And we'll also review some of the things, some examples of things a finance manager or finance analyst within uh, corporate finance might work on. Okay, so what is corporate finance? So the finest, it's the finest division within a company, or it could be even a, a government or a nonprofit or a church. You're gonna have a finance division. Um, technically those jobs are, are effectively corporate finance jobs. Overseer of the finance function is the CFO or chief financial officer. And these are big jobs at big companies. You know, when you look at big publicly traded companies, often the CFO is kind of considered the second in command of the, of the company. Now, so what, what does the corporate finance function do? So they make sure track transactions are recorded accurate and compliant with whatever uh, standards apply to the country or the type of business that you run. They take those transactions and they create uh, financial results and they report those to the operating team, sometimes to investors, owners, um, and they analyze those results to make sure that the health of the company is strong. Now, they, their job really isn't only to report and analyze those results and monitor them, but they wanna play a role in optimizing the performance of the company. So how can they help to increase revenue? How can they reduce costs? How can they uh, optimize the, the profitability, overall profitability of the company? And they should be doing analysis and working with the operating teams, the sales team, whoever, to, to try to increase the performance. The finance division owns kind of oversight over what projects uh, are invested in, uh, what products are developed, assets are purchased, uh, talk about this as capital expenditure. They also are gonna set a forecast and a, or a budget for how the company will operate. And this is often done in a very short term, but then also longer term, three year forecast, five year, 10 year. So these are the targets that have to be set intelligently so that they can drive, again, the sales team, the operating teams to achieve those and to to ultimately result in the success of the company. They need to make sure they have adequate cash. You need to know the inflows, the outflows of cash. Um, often they also manage the, the funding of the business, how they get capital, uh, whether it's commercial paper, loans, equity, you name it. They model and they may model and underwrite deals. So acquiring a company, acquiring a new customer um, or selling off a portion of the business and they need to manage the risk of the company. There is absolutely nothing going on with me romantically. Great. So that's corporate finance. But you'll hear about a ton of other finance jobs. And sometimes I think they get commingled. Some people think FP&A is corporate finance. Or they think corporate finance is just... FP&A and Treasury or something along those lines. They may also think that investment banking or financial services, they may think of those as corporate finance. And, and sometimes a, a big investment bank or a commercial a financial services firm, they will still have a corporate <laughs> finance entity. 
that has a CFO and they have accountants and analysts and you name it. But you know, the way we think about it here, and if you click the link, you can see uh, a video where we break down each of these and what those, these careers do uh, from an entry level perspective and what the career prospects look like. But these are really the different areas of finance. You've got investment banking, consulting, sales and trading, commercial banking, private equity, uh, portfolio management, portfolio analysts, research analysts, um, and then you've got financial planning and services. So there's a broad spectrum and corporate finance is just one piece of that spectrum. But this helps lay out that landscape. And again, if you click on the link, uh, it's in the description as well. Um, you can learn a little bit more about each of these careers. Now, corporate finance in particular is a really good area to have a career. Um, there's tremendous, tremendous breadth. So you can have different roles. You could be an FP&A, you could work at a shop or a site. You could uh, do commercial finance, corporate development where you're working on deals. Uh, just tremendous breadth of the roles. Uh, there's different industries. You know, there's there you could work at banks. You could work at manufacturing companies, um, internet companies, software companies. Uh, and then there's all different sizes from, you know, you might be a CFO of a small business and you might be the only finance employee at that business. Or maybe you're the CFO of Amazon and you have a, a thousand or more finance, uh, person finance team underneath you. There's not typically an up or out culture in corporate finance, maybe within a certain area. You know, some companies have programs which are for accelerating uh, into leadership roles and those might be up or out, but you can have a long career uh, and well compensated career in corporate finance as either a leader of teams, people leader, or as an individual uh, where you're just working on your area um, and you can do it at all different levels. There's, there's room for many different people in corporate finance. Uh, whereas, you know, investment banking, consulting, some of these, you're, you kind of either progress or you have to leave and go get a different job. There are a lot of placement options out of undergrad. Um, and you can, again, have a full career, the number of jobs, you, know, you take companies like Amazon and uh, Toyota and some of these big Exxon Mobil, they have, a large, large foreign finance organizations um, that you can have a really interesting career within one company moving to different functions or different areas of the business. Location and work-life balance flexibility. So some of the jobs like investment banking or portfolio management, the research jobs are maybe focused in New York City or you know, London or other big cities like that. Um, but corporate finance is everywhere. Um, you can from small towns to big cities all around the world. Um, and, and there's also significantly more work-life balance in many of those areas. Now, if you want to be a CFO, you're definitely going to put in a lot of hours, especially if you're thinking about this, being a CFO of a public company. But you're, you're, you're able to create a, a career that has balance. You may, you can make, over $100,000 a year and work very reasonable hours in corporate finance. A lot of variety. You work at Apple, Amazon, Toyota, or a small company down the road. Uh, you, you certainly can make a lot. This is an outrageous example, but the Oracle CFO in 2019 made somewhere around $108 million. Now, large, largely that was in a form of equity grants and that Oracle CFO moved into the CEO position, but uh, I, there's, you'll still find a number of CFOs making over $20 million a year, but you also may come into a company work making $35,000, $40,000 a year at a small company if you didn't go to a big school and, um, you know, just tons of variation. The job categories, right? You could work in accounting, treasury, financial planning and analysis, supply chain, you could work in corporate development, um, risk, commercial finance, uh, tons of variety. The work hours, again, you kind of, you can work and select jobs that you think fit your work-life balance.
Now, what might you do if you actually take one of these jobs? So we talked about a few of these things, but you might be working in your job to decide how the company best uses cash, what assets or companies or anything else uh, the company invests in, what machines they buy for a shop, what equipment. You might be working a business case uh, or a model to decide whether or not to launch a new product. You could be just reviewing financial results to try to understand what's driving the company's growth. You might model what a new deal or an agreement, a big contract with a customer is worth. You might be in the treasury area and manage foreign exchange risk through, through different hedging programs. Um, or you could be raising capital or assuring the right bank loans and financial positions. You could work directly with investors through the investor relations to help explain the results of the company. You might be working to optimize working capital. So reducing inventory, getting better term payment terms with your suppliers. Uh, and you might work on due diligence for the acquisition of the company of a company, something more like you would do in private equity or investment banking. And these are just a few examples, uh, really again, to point out the, the breadth of potential options in corporate finance. Okay, there's a kind of a sim simplistic, but okay, a good, good for a, a newcomer to corporate finance, a review of, of what the industry is all about. Sorry about the Hulu commercial, a little bit into it, uh, but um, that gives you a good background. So to... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. I'm fighting a cold and all hell just broke loose. But in summary, uh, our introduction to our videos uh, or into our course is uh, just to get, get you up to speed and familiar with our Blackboard, familiar with the course syllabus, and an introduction to the course uh, material that you need to do this week in the discussion forum, a brief bio about yourself, and a uh, and a company selection and that's also for me to see uh, that you can use blackboard efficiently and post to it so uh again uh welcome i look forward to working with you all i'd like this is a good class it gives you a good basic in finance uh, as you complete your mba degree and so uh, i look forward to seeing you all on monday april 3rd in our lecture of course lecture video remember again this is an asynchronous class there's no class time everything is videos and online so welcome everybody have enjoy your final weekend here of this before the session begins and i uh, look forward to seeing you all on monday until then adios